Hello and welcome to topic two of Materials Engineering Mate 210. We're going to focus in this topic on atomic bonding, but specifically how atomic bonding affects the, the properties or performance of materials, such as their elastic behavior and the thermal and electrical behavior. So let's get started. The outline follows our big picture outline that we talked about in topic one in class. Remember that there are four key components to the big picture of materials engineering. The composition of the material or what it's made out of, how it's processed, and together the composition and the processing determine the structure of the material, and that the structure, how bonds are, how atoms are bonded, um, how microstructure is formed, and so on, determines the performance of the material. Now we're going to look in topic two at a few more details of these big of this big picture. Specifically, we'll be looking at mechanical properties a lot. Um, in particular, the elastic modulus and elastic properties of materials. And we're going to look at how atomic bonding influences these mechanical properties. We'll spend a little bit of time. Oh, sorry about that. We'll spend a little bit of time also looking at thermal properties and electrical properties and how they're affected by atomic bonding as well. So let's begin with an application and I'd like to use the application of aircraft wings. They're an excellent example of elastic behavior and how bonding can affect elastic behavior. So what are some materials that we can make wings out of? Well, there are very simple wings like balsa wood wings that work very well for their application. There are also wood and canvas wings from World War I aircraft. Aluminum wings from World War II aircraft. Titanium wings such as this SR-71 Blackbird that was a spy plane in the 1960s and 70s. And today we have rem pilotless remote drones that have carbon composite wings. So there's a wide range of materials that can be used for aircraft wings. It's not just one particular type of material that makes a good airplane wing. So we have to ask ourselves the question, why would all these different materials... I'm sorry... There we go. Turn that off. We have to ask ourselves the question, why would all these materials make good airplane wings, depending on the particular type of airplane we're designing? So let's take a look at what we want when we talk about an airplane wing. The most important property is that it be both lightweight and stiff. So a normal wing should look like this. When we get in an airplane, we should see that the wing is flat. It will bounce up and down a little bit during flight, but not too much. What would be bad, obviously, is if the wing was bent like this that would suggest that the wing was not stiff enough. And of course the opposite problem of having the wing be too heavy would cause the wing to deflect downward and we would never be able to get off the ground. And of course as you can see only the French here in this little French flag would actually want to have an airplane that is too dense. Sorry for all you Francophiles out there. Well if we look more carefully at the wing design we can actually figure out what properties are important in selecting materials for airplane wings. So this black stretch here represents the airplane's wing. Above the wing we have the force distribution for the aerodynamic lift acting on the wing. And below the wing we have a number of different force distributions. So the yellow represents the force distribution of the weight of the wing itself, the structural weight of the wing. In addition, we have weights for fuel loads, that's the purple. We have the payload of the aircraft itself, the engine that's hanging on the wing, maybe a landing gear, something like that. But what matters to us most is how much the wing deflects. We don't want it to flex upward too much during flight. That would mean that it wasn't stiff enough. enough. And we don't want the wing to be too heavy. So we want to minimize the structural weight of the wing. So let's look at the structural weight first. The mass of a wing, M, is determined by the density of the material of that wing times the cross-sectional area of the wing times the length. And area times length gives us the volume. So the density times the volume is equal to the mass. The tip deflection, delta, is determined by an equation that comes from what we call beam theory. So if you've taken CE204, Strength of Materials, you've learned about beam theory. But for now, let's just say that it's dependent on the force acting on the wing, the length of the wing, so the longer the wing, the more it will deflect and bend. And then it's divided by two important parameters, the elastic modulus of the wing, or the property that determines how stiff the wing is, 
times this thing called I. And I is known as the second area moment of inertia. And you've learned about that in CE 204. The moment of inertia says how stiff is the shape of the wing. If I cut the wing down its cross section and looked at that cross section, I could determine how stiff it, that structure is. That's why some structures bend more easily than others. So for example, if you took a ruler, you can bend the ruler when it's laying flat very easily, but if I tip it on its side, it gets much harder to bend that ruler. I'll try to demonstrate that in class to make it a little bit more clear. But the important properties that we see in here, the only material property in this equation is the elastic modulus E. And the only material property in this equation is the density rho. So it turns out that in order to make really good airplane wings, we want to maximize the elastic modulus to make the wing very stiff and minimize the density to make the material, the, the wing very lightweight. So what's happening at the atomic level when we deflect a wing? Well, if we imagine the wing is made up of rows of atoms, which is pretty accurate actually, all bonded together with these orange colored bonds. Okay, so this is what we would call a crystalline lattice. And we'll talk more about crystalline lattices in topic three. When I apply a force to this crystalline lattice, you can see that the atoms get deflected downward, just like our wing would get deflected downward by the mass of the wing. And also notice that what's happening to these bonds, over here where it's not deflecting, the bond is the same length as it was before we applied the force. But over here where it's being highly deflected, you can see that the bond is now much longer than it was originally. The other thing you can see is that the bonds on top, so up here, are longer than they were before, whereas the bonds on the bottom are a little bit shorter, or at least the same length as they were before. So what that tells us is, is that in bending, the top of the beam is in tension. The bonds are being stretched. While, uh, while as on the bottom of the wing, the bonds are being compressed. In other words, the bonds are being shortened. Now, what's important to remember here is that if I release the load, the beam or wing returns to its original shape. And that's the definition of elastic deformation. When I deform a material, it should return